What better way to celebrate Easter than with an egg? Wait. Oh, it's uh, after Easter. Well, I've been busy with life, so you can't blame me for that. Yeah, I've been doing stuff. Let's get on with the materials. First thing that you're going to be needing is some uh, chalk eggs. I got these ones from Target and the, you know, like the little dollar bin area. And they come with these little chalks. Um, I don't really have a use for them, so I might just throw them away. Or, if you're a woodmaker like me, nah, nobody's that good like me. But, uh, yeah, you, you just need some of these. I'm not sure what brand they are. But, uh, through that. Focus, focus, focus. Whatever the hell that is. But, uh, yeah, uh, this is going to be the basis, uh, and we can have an easier and more symmetrical base to sculpt off of when we actually do it. Next part is kind of up to you, but for the top of this one, I'm going to be using the top of one of these Christmas tree ornaments. If you buy really cheap ones, um, and if you look at the bottom of the box, there tends to be a mixture of hooks, broken ornaments, and the tops off of them. I buy cheap ornaments for Christmas, don't judge me, and there's always a bunch of these little dudes left over, so I have no shortage of them, and I can't reattach them. I know everybody's gonna spam me in the comments with that. However, you can use other things. And this one, this black one, I actually used real metal. Uh, so yeah, you can use real metal uh, if you're skilled enough with it. This is being held together by super glue and friction, so it's not 100% totally on the uh, the top of the ornament. You can leave it up to other things like metal or paper, or you could just sculpt it and cover and cover it with super glue because this is going to be around your neck uh, if you decide to wear it. So. You want to make sure that it's nice and stable, so I'm going to go either with metal or the top of this ornament. First of all, I'm not sponsored. Second of all, you're going to need clay. I'm going to be using an air dry clay from Crayola. I'm, I'm not a big fan of this stuff because it does tend to crack. You should. I would most likely recommend plumber's epoxy, but uh, yeah, I don't have any of that on hand right now uh, because... I would use that for everything if I did have it, but this is just all I have. It's probably about the same texture, but when it dries on the eggs, it it cracks, and uh, if you put it in a very thin layer, it will crack. So keep that in mind. You just can't stop it from happening, and it's it, it pisses me off. Needless to say, use something better than this, but I don't care. I'm used to it. I'm going to need some cordage, uh, specifically I'm going to be using 275 paracord, it's not focusing. Uh, that's good enough, I have a really bad camera. But uh, yeah, I have probably about 20 feet here, maybe even 30, but I have no shortage of this stuff. I have it left over from making a whip, and I just, I need to get rid of it, so I'm going to be using it as the lanyard for this baylet. Uh, thong, whatever it is, but uh, yeah, you could use leather, masonry line, I have used mason line in the past and it is somewhat good, but uh, this, if I uh, rub it in golf wax, that'll give it a leather look, so yeah, you could use 550 paracord, but for this sake, oh there's, I don't want thread on it, but uh, for the sake of this video, I'm going to be using this, uh, paracord right here. Why is my camera not focusing? Another thing, uh, you will need various paints and polishes and other stuff. I'd recommend using nail polish and acrylic paints or a Mod Podge if you have the need to seal it. I did seal this one and it came out looking awesome. This is a black bailout that I made for my brother. Uh, I, I think I do a pretty good job sculpting these things. The mouth is probably one of the hardest things you could sculpt. Come on, focus, focus. Well, it's not. Uh, the nose is quite straightforward. It's just a nose, but yeah, uh, you will need paints, just acrylics and nail polish. If you want to do a screaming baylet, by all means, just don't use the methods that I used for this. 
cut a hole into the egg and sculpt the inside of the inside of the mouth of there. I cannot English today, damn. But uh, yeah, uh, this just don't feel limited. This is your thing that you're creating. Don't. I'm going to be making a crimson baylet here, but don't feel uh, limited with your baylet. You can make it green. You can make it gray. You can make it black. I don't care. That's up to you. But for the sake of this video, I will be making mine red. Another thing, I'm going to be using this uh, scrap metal instead for the little clasp on top of the baylet. Sorry, this size clay on it because I was testing out something on it. But yeah, I'm going to be using the metal instead because I felt like that would be a much more sturdy option. So yeah. Next, we're going to be going over some tools. Uh, all I have here is some tin snips, some palette knives, I have a pointed one and a blunt one. I also have a little bit of sandpaper, focus, focus. This is very fine stuff. I also have a pencil for marking out where I want everything to be, and also a pocket knife. Now that we're on the first step, uh, step the first thing that you're going to want to do is take some sandpaper and just make this egg nice and smooth so that we will have a nice clean base to start off uh, when we start sculpting our uh, facial features onto the egg. Now that I've got all the seams sanded off, I'm going to take my pencil and mark out all the stuff that I want to be on this baylet. Uh, since this is the crimson baylet, I'm going to make it look like the one from the manga. You don't really want a lot, you just want uh, marks to show where you want everything. I want the mouth here, an eye there, a nose here, and the other eye up there. So yeah, that's what I'm going to be having my baylet look like. Feel creative, put your nose over here, put your mouth somewhere else. Now we're ready to start sculpting. Use whatever clay you want, except uh, plasticine or polymer clay because plasticine never dries, and to get polymer clay to harden, you have to bake it in the oven, and these eggs will probably melt. So I'd recommend using plumber's epoxy. So I'm going to start off by making the nose, just a chunk of clay, just blend it into the side, maybe take a little material off of that because it's a little big. This is quite simple. I'm pretty sure anyone anyone can do this. These are fun gifts. If you have someone that likes Berserk related to you, go ahead and give them one of these. They will uh, definitely like it. The egg of the king. Take your time. Be patient. Uh, you have all the time in the world when you do this stuff, especially if you're like me. So take your time, Baylets have very strong noses, so get that shape down, you want that big, flat part of the nose to be defined quite evenly, and try to get it pretty nice sculpt. Next thing that I'm going to be doing is quite straightforward, is make the nostrils, so I'm going to take this pencil, make a little dude there, and another one over here. You can find those a little bit more than I have, but uh, I'm just going to go ahead and say that's good enough for now. The next thing that we're going to be doing is making the eyes. Make sure that your pencil marks are still quite, still quite clear and you can see them nicely. So what I'm going to start by doing with the eyes is take a single piece of clay and try to break it as evenly as possible. I find that if I can break a, one big chunk It'll make it easier for me to make two symmetrical pieces. Next, we're going to be taking it, pushing it out so it's a little oval, pushing it into the egg. Make sure that you have full surface contact and just smooth it out and really take your time because these eyes, we want them to look like eyes. You, won't, you don't want someone to call them a mouth or another nose. so. Yeah, take your time. You're going to take your palette knife and make a nice clean cut right here to make the eyelid. You could take two pieces and just smush them together to make the eyelid, but I wouldn't really want to do that because that could give me more of a chance to mess it up. You could do it if you wanted, 
but I'm not going to be doing that. Take this edge, and there we go. That is one of the eyes. Repeat the same step for the other one down here, and I'll meet up with you when we start doing the mouth. Now that we're going to start on the mouth, what you want to do is take a piece of clay and roll it out into a little sausage. I've seen people make their baylets smile. I don't understand why you'd want to do that. I, I, I think I like the more peaceful look of the baylet, like it's at rest, waiting to be activated. Next thing I want to, go, want to do is, I notice that my mouth is a little bit close to the nose, nose bridge here, so I'm going to move it slightly off to the side more. Pack it in, make sure I have full contact with the clay and the egg. And now I'm going to start smoothing these edges down, and then we can start beginning the sculpt. Now we're going to be making the mouth. Uh, what we want to do is just make a nice even slit again, just like how we did with the eyes. This time for the lips, we want to make a good separation so you can see those are lips and not in another eye. Take our tool, put it on the side like this, and just turn that egg and make the lip look like a lip. Now we're going to do that to the other side, turn it at an angle. And now we have something that looks like lips. Now we're going to start sculpting detail into it. I'm going to take my rounded, my blunt palette knife, put it in a little bit of water. I'm going to make the cupid's bow just by pressing the knife in and dragging down. Smooth that down with my thumb. Get a little bit more water in there. I'm only using a little tiny bit of water just to sort of smooth things out. And there we have the cupid's bow. Now, going to take the edge of this little palette knife and I'm going to start sculpting wrinkles into the lips oops start sculpting wrinkles into the lips and start giving the entire thing texture and now uh, I'm just going to let this thing dry now keep in mind these eggs they have a little hole at the bottom now, I'm going to use that to my advantage and take this pencil and just stick it in there, or you could use a paintbrush, I'm most likely going to use the back end of a paintbrush, and uh, let this thing out to dry, and uh, yeah, I'm just going to let my camera charge, and uh, I'll come back when there's going to be cracks in this thing, keep that in mind, I said that earlier in the video, but yeah, that's just something that's going to happen. just want to give you guys a look now that the billet is dry, uh, there are some cracks down there, right there a little bit on the corner right there some over there one right there some more on the outside of this eye and just a couple on the top of the nose you can't stop this from happening with the clay that I have however uh, now to get rid of that I'm just gonna give it a clear coat with some clear nail polish this should fill in the cracks enough uh, but if they're really wide really big and open uh, just fill it in with a little bit of super glue, maybe a little bit of baking soda, and just sand it down. Just want to show you guys the egg in better lighting now that I've uh, sealed it. This will make it so uh, when we start to paint it, our colors won't smear and mix with the clay. Because the clay that I'm using is water based. Filled in that crack right there. I know it doesn't look like it just filled in, but. <laughs> The, the, the sealer that I used, aka clear nail polish, really did uh, really did its job and sealed this all so it's nice and hard and not breaking off anytime soon. Uh, now you can just skip and uh, do whatever color you want on it. Now you're just going to take your brass or copper or cardboard, whatever you want, draw out a square piece like that and then next you're gonna want to cut out a little star a little four-pointed star make it look prettier than the one that I have here the thing I did was I cut out the star and uh, I also cut out a little strip while I was there you don't really need measurements for these guys 
but uh, I will give you them. This one's about an inch from point to point. Um, each one of these is about half an inch long. Meanwhile, with this little dude over here, he's about an eighth of an inch wide, and he's also probably about two inches long. Yeah, I'd say about there. But uh, yeah. Now that uh, now that I've drilled that hole, yeah, please make yours look better than mine. Uh, I took the paintbrush that I stuck the baylet on and wrapped the little piece of metal around it. So now I can just slide this off and uh, stick this in here. All right, not too shabby. I think that's gonna work. Now that you have your metal clasp done, it's time to paint our baylet. Uh, you make yours whatever color you want. I'm gonna make mine red. Just use nail polish. Okay, so I'm an idiot. Uh, when I used the red nail polish, it didn't look that good at all. In fact, it just made it pink. I didn't want it to be pink, so I took those colors, I sanded them down with a very fine sandpaper. Look at the dogo. Um, and then I covered it with uh, acrylic paint in a couple layers, I uh, went over a different shade in the mouth, a uh, different shade of red in the eyes, the nose, and in the other eye. So yeah, I covered it with Mod Podge in one big thick layer, so now none of these colors are rubbing off in that, the, the Mod Podge, it really helps blend all these colors together. Because if you, you know why you boil a stew, right? So if you boil a stew, you're going to blend all the colors together. It's not to make it hot. That's what the Mod Podge does. It blends all those beautiful colors together and makes it look like one piece. And I left the hole at the bottom because uh, I can uh, put it on a stand and display it. But if you don't want a hole in the bottom like I kept with mine, just uh, cover it up with a little bit of hole cover it with more nail polish, sand that down, and then go over it with more acrylic paint. And you might notice something. I poked a hole in the top, and I'll show you what that's for in a second. Uh, that's starting to look like a baylet. Come on, focus, boy. Come on. Eh. Well, it's not focusing, but now I can poke the uh, little brass piece in there with the little... Eh. With a little inside, so that just slides down in there like a glove. And now I can just bend these down so that they're flush. Okay, so now I got this thing straightened up and it's time for some super glue. Hi, dog. Okay, so I, uh, I finished the clasp and the chain. Yes, I know I said I was going to use 275 parrot cord, but I had this chain. Focus, boy. I had this chain left over, and uh, I didn't really know that I, what I was going to do with it, so I was like, yep, I'm just going to use that instead. But, uh, yeah, Crimson Baylet is done. So, uh, yeah, cue that photo montage, boy. Well, another video is finished. Uh, I don't really know what to say. I haven't even filmed the bit of me cutting in half the piece of chalk with a whip yet, so yeah, that just shows you how far I am into editing this. I hope you all enjoyed this video, and uh, yeah, have a happy Easter. Damn it, I did it again. Uh, yeah, have a good day. Have a good Mother's Day, actually, I should say. Uh, make one of these, give it to your mother, and yeah, have a good time. Thank you for watching, and please consider subscribing.